In September 2014, the Prime Minister's Office and the Ministry of Defence produced a learning resource. It featured on the websites of Armed Forces Day, the Ministry of Defence, the Times Educational Supplement, County Councils and several MPs, and it was emailed to every school. It's a booklet, viewable online, with chapters written largely by members of the military, past and present. Its stated aim is to help introduce the work of the British Armed Forces. It might seem innocent enough, but it comes as part of a wider militarisation of education. Other programmes include the rapid expansion of cadet forces in state schools, the costly Troops to Teachers programme, new schools partnered with the military and arms companies, government funding for organisations delivering a military ethos under the guise of fun and fitness, and the ongoing recruitment of under-18s. The booklet itself looks like a brochure aimed at recruiting young people. It directs them to careers offices and training, and it's full of links to the Armed Forces websites and social media, like this one, that takes users straight to the recruitment page of the Army's website. Perhaps it isn't that surprising. The government's youth engagement review named recruitment as a principal outcome. Colonel Olfrey, former head of Army recruitment, said, We take a ten-year span. It starts with a seven-year-old boy seeing a parachutist at an air show and thinking, that looks great. From then on, the Army is trying to build interest by drip, drip, drip. This booklet is one of those drips. Leaving recruitment aside, there are other reasons it's troubling to see such a document put into schools. It's educationally inadequate and it's one-sided in its depiction of the military. For a start, it claims to help teach children as young as five. Even leaving aside the subject matter, the reading age of the text is 13. It aims to support teachers of history, English and citizenship, but the lesson ideas range from the standard learn a war poem to the chilling devise a plan for how to go to war. This isn't to say that the military shouldn't be discussed in schools, it should, but the British Armed Forces pack fails to support critical thinking and questioning. For example, referring to the golden thread of the military, improving everything it touches. In his foreword, David Cameron tells readers they should be profoundly grateful for what the military do and hopes it will begin their interest in Britain's armed forces, the finest and bravest in the world. With unwitting irony, a subsequent lesson asks students to look at propaganda and analyse the persuasive words used. The 1996 Education Act says that schools should present balanced views of political issues, but the booklet doesn't differentiate between fact and opinion and presents only positive views of the military. History is a recitation of victories winning freedom. So-called nuclear deterrence has saved millions of lives. Arms companies boost British industry. Recent conflicts were about protecting the peace, with Iraq and Afghanistan barely mentioned, and nothing about the accompanying destruction, public opposition and torture. The booklet rightly highlights remembrance and the welfare of service people but minimises the physical and mental health problems that plague many soldiers and veterans. For an education pack about the armed forces, death and killing are curiously absent. Now any good citizenship teacher would explain that the UK's government and armed forces are kept separate for the sake of democracy. This booklet crosses that line. The government does set a curriculum but up to now it's left the content to education professionals to avoid politicising children's learning. This booklet confuses the military with government and funnels the mixture into the classroom. For war to become normalised, it requires the military, a government and an arms industry. But militarisation rests on more pillars than that. It needs the media, culture, public space, institutions and education. So what happens in the classroom affects the attitudes of a society to war. 
whether or not young people join the armed forces, their minds can be recruited. The British Armed Forces Pack combines a barely concealed recruitment agenda, shallow education content and the sanitization of war. It doesn't belong in the classroom, except perhaps as an example of militarization for students to discuss. We give it an F.